Well, the snow is melting, temperatures are rising, and it's time to start thinking a little bit about that open and close. We're going to be talking about that today on The Boiling Point. Well, it's Daniel Ware, our operations manager here at Ware. Yes, we are related, the much younger, much taller, uglier. But anyway, hey, we're talking about open and close today, Daniel. Why don't you talk a little bit about the um, open and close, why we have them, um, and, and just basically what you do. Okay. Um, when we do an open and close for our, for our annual inspection, we're going through, we're opening up all the fire side on the boiler, you're opening up all the water side, and what you're looking for is you're looking for scale in the boiler, as well as you're looking for any type of soot buildup on your fire side. Um, when you're uh, on, from the fire side, from a scale buildup standpoint, uh, you know, about an eighth inch in the fire side is equivalent to about a 47% heat loss. So you want to make sure that the, the, the fire side of your boiler is in good shape and is uh, nice and cleaned out. Now, um, when, the, when you're doing the inspections, is this something that's done annually on um, fire tubes that are steam or hot water? Or what's both. Um, it's done annually for high pressure units, if it's 15 pound design systems, that's every two years. Okay. Yeah. All right, well Daniel, um, when we're back here on the, uh, the rear door here, um, basically, are they opening up everything when we're doing that open and close? Absolutely. Uh, you're wanting to take your, your top doors off as well as open up the, uh, your main rear door. Uh, when you're opening all this up, what you're really looking for, again, you're looking at the fire side as well as refractory on the back door. You're making sure that the refractory is intact. If it's the refractory's all falling out, we can do minor repairs. Um, but, but if it's all falling out, you take the risk of burning up your rear door. Um, so you always want to make sure that the refractory is in, is in good shape. Any type of cracks? I mean, is there a certain crack that you're like, you know what, we've got to fix that? You know, it's really just, you know, a, a lot of judgment calls. If you can stick your finger in it, it's probably going to be too big. Okay. Uh, we like to go through and, and pick out some of the refractory, and then we can do some minor patching on it. Then. Okay. Now, as far as the tubes, obviously you're seeing the uh, the back side of the tubes, right? Um, and the tube sheet, so right. you're inspecting that as well. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If you do find cracks in the tube sheet, um, which is a good indication of fire cracks, it's always good to do a mag particle test on the tube sheet so you can get that crack repaired to eliminate any damage that could occur. Okay. All right. So we walk around here to the um, handhole. Right. And maybe talk a little bit about um, the handhole and what we're looking for once we get that out. Right. The handholes are in place just for inspection purposes. Um, when you take these out, you're really going to look at your water side or your tubes to, to look at the scale. Okay. Um, you can have a little bit of scale in the tubes. Uh, a 32nd of an inch of scale is equivalent to a 2% increase in fuel uh, consumption. If they actually, uh, once you actually take that scale off, um, you have the bare tube. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at and looking for, if you will, on that tube to say, you know, hey, this is this boiler needs to be retubed or whatever. Yeah, again, you're you're really looking at at the tubes as well as you're looking to see if there's any type of pitting that may be in those tubes that could be from oxidation, um, any type of chemical pitting, uh, any 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 type of that. Okay, and I'm assuming the scale is actually formed when there's uh, just too much chemical. It could be too much chemical, not enough blowdown, just from your, your surface blowdown, not blowing off, getting all of your total dissolved solids off the top of the water. Okay. Definitely something then to make sure that on a regular uh, maintenance schedule that you're actually blowing the boiler down. It's very, Absolutely. Very we okay. always recommend a blowdown once every eight hour shift. All right. Good. All right. Well, Daniel, um, do the inspectors, are they actually on the job site when this is going on? Yeah, your inspectors will come on the job site once you're ready for them to inspect the boiler. Uh, what you're wanting to get ready for them, you're obviously you're wanting to have everything on your fire side and water side uh, removed. Um, and that includes all your caps, crosses, and McDonald Miller heads. So they can inspect your water column, look through the, uh, your control line to make sure there's not a buildup uh, of, of scale in there that could that could uh, limit your operating controls from working properly. Okay, and so he's on site and he'll actually look through all of this and, and decide whether or not this is something that uh, he can pass. That's right, that's okay. right. 
Okay. So on this McDonald Miller, um, the head, if you will, mm -hmm. um, what are they looking for in there? Again, they're looking inside of here to make sure that there's not a, an excessive buildup of scale that could limit the float from working properly or that could clog this line up, that could stop that line up and, and trick this thing to look like it's full of water. Okay, okay. Um, obviously the man way on top of mm -hmm. the boiler, that needs to be out as well for yes, them. Yes, okay? absolutely. They can actually look down and see the tubes. And, yes. Okay, Yes. all right. All right, so the inspector, he checks out everything, everything is great. Um, I'm assuming from there you're filling the boiler, putting yeah. everything back. Well, well yeah, once, once that's complete and you get your clean bill, um, you go through and you put all new gaskets on the fireside, waterside, manway. Put, uh, put your caps and crosses, your McDonald Miller head back on. Um, you button the boiler up, you go ahead and fill it up, and get ready for your uh, uh, for test fire. Okay, yeah. and upon that test fire, I'm assuming we're moving into the burner and we want to make sure that everything is um, I guess in tune. Yeah, it, it's always a great practice. Once you're done, and go ahead and put, a, put an analyzer on the boiler um, and check it and make sure your O2s are where they need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have proper combustion. Safeties. Yes, absolutely. Um, we always check your safeties. Uh, your high limits, your running interlocks, uh, to make sure everything is functioning so you have a, a safely operated piece of equipment. Okay, so the boiler gets all started up, it's all tuned and uh, um, I guess highly efficient and really an optimal performance after a boiler Absolutely. An inspection. Absolutely. Okay. All right, man, appreciate you stopping by. All right, man. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, make sure you check out the website. You see a little bit more about the, um, the open and close. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, we appreciate Daniel stopping by and talking to us a little bit about the open and close. Obviously that annual open and close inspection is something very, very important. Check out our website under the preventative maintenance section and you'll be able to see a lot more and a little bit more detail about the preventative maintenance as well as the open and close. Also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.